So I've got some pretty interesting questions for you. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're really practical at first from one mom to another. Okay. How did you get up or do night feeds with triplets? I had a hard time with yeah. my one son. What a great question. Okay, so they whenever uh, it's like so complicated, <laughs> I can't even answer it like easily. <laughs> and it would take two hours, about two hours and 45 minutes to feed them if you do it perfectly. And that was because they were premature. And when most babies are allowed to sleep through the night, they weren't allowed to because they needed to gain weight. They were just two and three pounds when they were born. So two and three and three. And um, so we, we would feed them. And then if we did it perfectly, we'd have 15 minutes before it started over. Well, obviously like we're human, so we can't survive that way. <laughs> and so we realized pretty quickly that wasn't going to be very realistic um, to live. And so my my husband and I would do shifts. Um, I, since my background's in counseling, I was like, okay, if we can get a solid six hours without waking up, that would be good. And so it actually also gave me time to write my book. So I would I learned to go to bed at 7 p.m. and I would wake up at 2. And so during that time, I would sleep consistently and my husband would do the feedings and then at 2 a.m. I would wake up and write my book and stay up the rest of the day and so I would, I would feed so them and burp them and then be writing my book and <laughs> yeah and but the real answer is by God's grace <laughs> yeah. I would say uh -huh. it's a good it's a good yeah. testimony of God's grace right and yeah. having a great husband. A great husband. <laughs> yes. I know. I, I read a lot of the points mm -hmm. in the book about mm -hmm. and Ryan comes up and yes. incredible support. Incredible yes. Man. Well, it's our book. I just wrote it. Yes. You know, it's our story. There's nothing. Yeah. yeah it's We're intertwined in every way. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. You know, I think for some people, they've been, and I, I just think about this, you know, I know, and I've been in these stages in my life where you're so disappointed mm -hmm. or you're so disheartened and maybe something's gone on for so long. Yeah. How do you get to a place where you can start dreaming again with God? Wow, what a great question. Um, so I love the counseling phrase, you have to feel it to heal it. Yeah. And I think especially for Christians, we want to over-spiritualize like, well, mm. You know, that was just God's plan. It's like, okay, but maybe you're like really <laughs> mad about it, you know? <laughs> yep. And so I think that it, you have to feel it to heal it. And we know that from neuroscience. We know that from counseling. I mean, we know it. It's even in the Bible. Pour out your pour out your hearts to God. And, you know, God can handle our emotions. And so I think whenever you actually do the hard work of processing, telling him the truth he knows anyway, and being honest about how you feel, you can get to a new place of dreaming. But I'm just a firm believer in asking for what you want and need. And I've had times in my life where I'm like, okay, I would like to have some new dreams. Can you give some to me? I mean, like I, we can talk yeah. like that to God. We have full access to him and he, I, we always talk about this. We talk to everyone about our problems, but no one wants to hear from us more than God does. Uh, and you know, you can just talk to him about anything and that's great. And so uh, tell me what new dreams, but also you gotta process those feelings about whatever's gone on. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that answer. That's so amazing. I want to share that with myself <laughs> eight years ago and yeah, my friends right. today who are struggling. It's a mm -hmm. beautiful point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think also sometimes people are in a season of suffering mm -hmm. and they have to get through that season. Yes. And having that purpose, mm -hmm. right? Dreams, those yes. do make a difference. So yes. asking God and telling God your dreams and mm -hmm. being honest, like you're saying right. about how you feel. But you know, you talk a bit in your book about insulating yourself, mm -hmm. about protecting yourself when you are suffering, like seeking out joy. There's uh -huh. some things you said. How do we get through a season of suffering yes. while we're praying big things? Absolutely. While we're saying, okay, God, do you really have this, but you're still open to God's work mm -hmm. in your life? Yes. Well, I mean, I can tell you what worked for us. I love the axiom. It's you don't feel your way into an action. You act your way into a feeling. Mm -hmm. And so practically going through the steps of, okay, if I weren't anxious or I weren't suffering, what would I do? Okay, I'd work out, I'd go see a movie, like, and just remembering kind of who you were before this season and putting those things into practice, I think is really important. Um, and then also just, again, telling, telling God the truth, but about how you feel. But for me, <clears throat> what was important was I didn't know if I was gonna have kids or not. I felt like that was a promise, but what do, what did I know? What do I know I'm supposed to do? As a Christian, I don't have to wonder. I know I'm supposed to tell people about Christ. And so no matter what was going on personally, I knew ministry-wise what, ministry what I was supposed to do. And that 
really was pivotal for Ryan and me. Yeah. Maybe these things are going to happen, maybe they aren't, but what do I know I am supposed to do? And I am supposed to share the gospel. Oh, that's amazing. So a lot of purpose. Yes. You know, seeking to stay connected to mm -hmm. God. And what and you know without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. What you know and, uh -huh. and letting your mind, your thoughts be stronger than those emotions to yes. lead you, to yes. lead you in that time. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, if, as you mentioned earlier, being honest about your emotions. Yes. I love that. It's yes. a beautiful picture of healing and it reflects how how much God has structured our brains and bodies yes. to work together, yes. our emotions, our minds. Absolutely. And, and that's uh, your, probably your clinical counseling. Well, I always tell the teenagers, because that's what uh, we work with teenagers for a living. I'm like, God's yeah. not like, oh, how'd they get emotions? I didn't mean to give them those. <laughs> like, they're there for a reason. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with yes. us today. Thank you for having me. It's a big me. gift to us. We'll see you soon, I hope. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Mm -hmm.